When an archaeological discovery is made, it can do one of two things. It can either serve as confirmation of things we already think we know about ancient history, or it can challenge our existing ideas. Discoveries that belong to the latter category are problematic for historians because they force them to reevaluate their perspectives, but they often make for great stories. There are great stories attached to all the problematic, history-changing discoveries you're about to see in this video. Perhaps there's no greater discovery an archaeologist can make than one that challenges our understanding of the origins of our species. That seems to be the case with the fossilized remains of Dragon Man, a skull that was found in China and might belong to a previously unknown human species. The skull is around 140,000 years old and was found in the northeast of the country. Scientists say that it belonged to a male of around the age of 50 who had a large brain, flat cheekbones, and in general resembled modern humans more closely than Neanderthals. In fact, he'd have looked more like a modern man than any other extinct member of the human family tree. The species has been given the provisional name Homo aeongi, with the Dragon Man nickname coming from the region of China it was found in. This may be the first sign of a third lineage of later humans that existed at the same time as Homo sapiens and Neanderthals. An alternative explanation is that Homo aeongi and the species known as Denisovans may have been one and the same, but we can't yet prove that because we're yet to find a whole Denisovan skull. For hundreds of years, the Trifal Stone in southwest Wales was thought to be little more than an ancient standing stone. It was interesting to archaeologists because of its age, but little more than that. More recently, experts have discovered that the Trifal Stone is, in fact, the capstone of a large tomb that was built around 5,500 years ago. The finding came after archaeologists studied cut marks on its surface, which show similarities to cut marks found on Neolithic and Bronze Age burials in the region. That was enough to justify a geophysical survey of the land around the stone, which revealed pottery shards, beads, and human bones. Rather than being a fairly boring old stone, this is now a rare and precious example of the ritual burials of the earliest farming communities ever to settle on the British Isles. The intense farming activity that happened in Wales during the 17th century might have destroyed many ancient sites like this, but this one survived. It just took us a very long time to unlock its secrets. Other standing stones in Wales are now being checked for similar cut marks. The history of writing is a controversial topic among archaeologists and historians. Nobody knows for sure when or where the written language began, but its possible start date has been pushed back 500 years after the discovery of inscribed clay tablets in Syria in April 2021. The patterns carved into the tablets appear to be alphabetic writing and come from a time five centuries earlier than the oldest known examples of alphabetic writing in Egypt. In short, that means that humans came up with the first alphabet 4,300 years ago. There are far older examples of written communication, but it was previously thought that the Egyptians were the first to use hieroglyphs as identifiable letters. Before that, a glyph could represent a whole word rather than a single letter. The tablets were actually found during excavations in Umm el Mara in 2004, but it's taken 17 years for researchers to study, decode, and understand them. They now think that the markings indicate the letters K, O, L, and A, but they haven't yet been able to identify any decipherable words in the text. The explanation might be as simple as someone using the tablets to practice the alphabet in a similar way that children do on paper today. Since we've pushed back the dawn of the alphabet, let's see if we can also push back the dawn of geometry. A recent discovery in Istanbul, Turkey seems to prove that the ancient Babylonians invented the concept of geometry long before the time of Pythagoras. Amazingly, the secret has been hiding in plain sight in a museum for all this time. This clay artifact, which is around 3,700 years old, has been in the museum since the 19th century, 
but wasn't properly understood until a researcher from the University of New South Wales studied it in early 2021. They say that it's a cadastral document and outlines geometric details about the new division of land in a field after some of it was sold by its owner. The division shows rectangles with diagonal lines drawn across them, forming perfect right angles consistent with the principle of the Pythagorean triple. However, Pythagoras wasn't born until around 1,000 years after this tablet was carved. It's only a small object, but it's rewritten the history of early mathematics. At some point in the 7th century, someone carved a few Germanic runes into this cow bone. When the bone was found in 2021, it changed our understanding of Slavic history. That's because the runes were carved 200 years before we thought the Slavs began to use a runic alphabet. The bone was found during a planned archaeological dig in Lani, not far from Breklov in Chechia. The inscription doesn't appear to be significant and is thought to have been created by a Slav while learning and practicing the German runic alphabet. The fact that the early German and Slavic people might have had a common written language in the 7th century flies in the face of everything we think we know about relations between the cultures during this period of history. The artifact is a fragment. The full bone probably had the entire alphabet carved into it. There are elementary mistakes in the carvings, which further supports the idea of it being a learning aid used by someone who was new to the language, and perhaps even the concept of writing. We've challenged the history of writing and mathematics, so now let's challenge the history of art. In 2015, archaeologists in China discovered fragments of a Neolithic mural among the Ximao ruins. Individual brush strokes are clearly visible in the paint. That's a puzzle for historians because the mural is 4,000 years old and predates the invention of the paintbrush. Chinese historians say that the paintbrush was invented by General Meng Qian of the Qing Dynasty. The problem is that the general wasn't born until around 1,800 years after this mural was painted. Stranger still, the pigments in the paint are made of glauconite, a material which can only come from the sea. The Ximao ruins are several hundred miles from the nearest coastline. Someone seems to have brought paint across a huge distance to paint this mural, and did so using an implement that shouldn't have been available to them. The mural itself, which shows a family sitting down to a banquet surrounded by musicians playing harps, isn't especially significant. The way it was painted, though, is an anachronism. General Meng Tian probably did invent a paintbrush of sorts, but he wasn't the first person in China to do so. The oldest tools ever found on Earth predate the emergence of the earliest humans. That's a staggering fact to think about, but here's the evidence. These very primitive stone tools were found on the shores of Lake Turkana, Kenya in 2015. Scientists say they're an astonishing 3.3 million years old. That makes them at least 700,000 years older than any other tool discoveries. If humans didn't make them, which seems impossible, then a pre-human species must have been responsible. The most likely candidates are Kenyathropus platyops or Australopithecus afarensis. Neither species has previously been thought of as sophisticated or advanced enough to make tools. Just under 150 tools has been recovered from the site, most of which are stone flakes that were used for cutting. Archaeologists have also found primitive anvils and hammers, some of which are large and would have taken considerable time to make. Tanzania's Aldawan tools were previously thought to have been the world's oldest, but with an age of 2.6 million years, they don't even come close to these Kenyan relics. If pre-human species were capable of making tools, it might mean that early humans learned tool making from these species, rather than working it out on their own. Throughout history, Peru has played host to many great South American civilizations. One of them was the Chachapoya. Very little is known about these mysterious ancient people, but in June 2018, we found out something new about them. Two delicately engraved metal cups were found in the country's Chachapoyas region 
and provide the first direct evidence that the Chachapoya were capable of metalworking. Known as the Cloud People, which is based on a translation of their name, the Chachapoya are known to have built cities, invented a form of writing that was also used by the Inca, and conducted trade across great distances. But metalworking had always been thought to be beyond them. Perhaps we should provide a note of caution here, though. While many historians are happy to support the idea of the cups being of Chachapoya origin, some feel it's more likely they were stolen as the spoils of war after a battle against the Inca, with whom they had a fractious relationship. The designs on the piece, though, aren't consistent with anything made by the Inca. In fact, they are not consistent with anything found in Peru before. Israeli-occupied Golan Heights isn't an easy place for archaeologists to conduct research, but when they do, they sometimes make amazing discoveries. The discovery of lines etched into the surface of this ancient tomb in July 2020 proves that. The tomb stands in a small clearing inside a nature reserve in Yehudia. It's technically known as a dolmen and is one of the thousands that were created in the region between 4,000 and 4,500 years ago. The lines were first noticed by a park ranger out on a daily inspection, but when she called archaeologists to come and take a closer look, they determined that the lines are actually drawings of mysterious horned animals. It's the first time that animal drawings have been identified on the monuments of the people who lived here all that time ago and the discovery has left archaeologists with a lot of questions. Was there something that made this dolmen more special than the other dolmens that surround it? Might it mean that the person who was buried here had a special significance of some kind? We know practically nothing about this ancient culture, but perhaps they left some clues behind in their art. All we need to do now is find more of it. Our understanding of the early history of the Americas is so limited that the discovery of one single human footprint has proved to be capable of undoing it completely. Here is that footprint. It was found in Chile in April 2010, and it's somewhere between 15,500 and 16,000 years old. That makes it the oldest evidence of humans living in the Americas and forces us to question everything we think we know about when the continent was first settled and who the first humans here were. The discovery of the footprint happened at an archaeological site called Pilauco, where digs have been ongoing since 2007. The finding is so controversial that scientists spent three whole years proving beyond reasonable doubt that it was made by a human. It's 4,000 years older than any known footprint on the continent. It was previously thought that the first settlers in America came across the Bering Straits from Siberia, eventually becoming a Paleo-Indian culture known as Clovis Man. It's now apparent that somebody else was here first. If the first settlers arrived from the south instead of the north, it might be that they may have been Pacific Islanders who first set foot in Chile. The transition between Amenhotep III and Amenhotep IV was a critical moment in ancient Egyptian history. The reign of Amenhotep III, roughly 3,400 years ago, is generally seen as the high point of ancient Egyptian civilization. The reign of his son, on the other hand, brought about huge changes. Amenhotep IV abandoned polytheism and introduced Aten, the sun disk, as the one true god. He was seen as a revolutionary even by the people of the time and became the father of Tutankhamun. Such is the stark difference between the policies of father and son that some historians suspect Amenhotep IV might have forcibly deposed his father, but this discovery suggests that wasn't the case. It's a carving in a tomb in Luxor, and it shows the names of both Amenhoteps carved together. Beneath the carvings are hieroglyphs identifying the father and son as the rulers of Upper and Lower Egypt. This pairing of two names together has no parallel in the history of Egyptian pharaohs and implies that they may have reigned together. Amenhotep III's reign was very long-lasting for 39 years, so he may have needed the support of his son during his later years. Does that mean he supported his son's revolutionary ideas too? That's a new question for historians to worry about. 
one mighty civilization after another has existed in Turkey over the years. That list includes the Sumerians, Babylonians, Akkadians, Assyrians, Romans, and many more. That means Turkey is covered in fabulous ancient ruins, and we haven't yet got round to fully investigating them all. In 2019, an incredible discovery was made at Bankuklu Tarla when archaeologists identified a series of temples that are, according to them, even older than the world-famous site of Gobekli Tepe. It's long been assumed that Gobekli Tepe is the oldest temple site in the world, but that supposition is apparently wrong. Even if we take the oldest estimates of the age of Gobekli Tepe, the site is about 12,000 years old. The archaeological evidence at Bankuklu Tarla suggests that these structures are a full 1,000 years older. Their simple arrangements with stiff clay floors and quarry stone walls but they'd have been impressive accomplishments for people living 13,000 years ago. The question of who created them remains unresolved. The tools that were used in the construction of the temples have also been found at the site, but they've proven to be just as anonymous as the temples. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.